Hi, I'm Wayne and this is Bastoa Woodworking. My table saw has been working overtime lately and now it's long overdue for some much needed maintenance. This table saw has been working really hard for me lately and it hasn't missed a beat. So now it's time to thank it by addressing some of the minor issues that are coming up before they become larger issues. I'm going to re-wax the tabletop and I'm going to grease all the trunnions and the bearings inside because while it moves up without making any noise, moving it down does now perform a squeak. So we're gonna get rid of that with some just re-greasing some trunnions and bearings. I've also had the hand wheel come off a couple of times. So the set screw needs to be reset. So I'm gonna take you along for the ride and show you all of the steps I take to maintain this table saw to keep it working like new for hope, hopefully ever because this table saw has a lot of sentimental value and I probably won't replace it anytime in the near future. You don't need much in the way of tools to perform just routine maintenance on a table saw. Some of these are very specialty to your table saw, but mine I require a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the throat plate. I require the arbor nut wrench, um, nitrile gloves so that I don't get the grease all over my hands. Some Johnson's paste wax. You can use any paste finishing wax. Wax. I just prefer the Johnson's stuff. It goes on and dries and um, leaves a nice like filmy um, haze that you can tell when it's all dry and it makes it easier to know when to buff out. Um, some WD-40. This is being used essentially like water. Um, it's going to be sprayed onto all of the trunnions and the um, screws so that I can have some liquid to scrub with. Um, I don't want to use water on any of the trunnions because I don't want to encourage rusting. So WD-40. Some um, wire brushes. These are just copper brushes. And some red and tacky grease. Um, there's a lot of debate over what should be used to um, grease the trunnions, whether you should use a graphite grease, um, wax, um, a dry lube. Um, there are different rationale between different types of lubes. Um, people say use a wax because it won't encourage sawdust to gather on the trunnions and all these other places where you apply it. I found that wax needs to be reapplied far too often. Um, so I know that I won't have the time to stop constantly and reapply wax. So I don't use wax. Um, same thing with a gr dry graphite lube or like a white lithium grease. It has to be applied so often that it becomes cumbersome to do. So I use red and tacky machine grease. Um, it, while it does gather sawdust, sawdust is a very fine particulate. It's not going to affect the function of the grease. And by the time uh, it becomes an issue and the squeaking comes back, it's time to do maintenance on the table saw again anyway. So I can then just scrub off with a wire brush all the old grease and reapply. To begin, I disconnected the table saw from power and dust collection and removed the fence just to make the table saw a little bit lighter and so that the fence won't be in the way. I then put the table saw up on its casters and wheeled it out. I typically wouldn't go through all this trouble. I would just wheel the outfeed table a few feet away from the back of the saw. But since I'm filming all of this, I decided to take the table saw completely out of its area so that I would have 360 degree access. I quickly vacuumed my work area and then removed anything that would be in the way during maintenance such as the blade and the dust cover for the bevel adjustment. arbor and I have most of the sawdust out of the main cavity. Even though I did build dust collection into this base, the way that the saw is designed, everything kind of gathers on the sides until it becomes like a funnel that will push the rest of the sawdust down. But no matter how careful you are with the way that you design dust collection for these old craftsman saws, you're going to end up with a significant amount of sawdust in the cavity. So now we're going to remove the belts from the arbor and from the motor. Um, check the link belt for any damage. If we need to be replaced, we can replace it or even just replace a couple of links.
And the link belt looks worn, but it looks like it's in good condition. It doesn't have any like obvious fraying that would cause any issues. So we're good to put this link belt back on. As you can see, I'm using a GoPro to get into all of the little areas where I typically wouldn't be able to view things. You can also just do this with a mirror, um, but since I have the GoPro, I'm using it and the footage will actually end up in the video. So it's win-win. Um, the teeth on this look great. Um, hardly any wearing on them at all. So next is to check that. Those teeth also look really great and the screw is also in very good shape so no problems there this is the mechanism that raises and lowers the blade um, the this is connected directly to the handle in the front and spinning this little screw will raise and lower the arbor of the blade next is checking all the trunnions um, which also look really good and just looking for any obvious signs of corrosion anywhere. The only issue on this saw is that this side here is a little bit bowed out. This is very common on Craftsman saws because the way that the tilt mechanism works is you're putting the entire weight of the motor on the trunnions. And if anything is in the way of the motor when it goes to tilt, you're just pulling the sheet metal out from the side and you can end up with a bow. And that at some point in the history of the saw, that happened to this saw. So I'm always very careful to make sure that I'm pushing my outfeed table away from the saw when I am doing bevel cuts. Next, just checking and spinning all the arbors, making sure I don't hear any rattling. If I hear rattling, that could mean that some bearings are starting to go. Um, so far, everything sounds great. Um, spinning the arbor to make sure that it's running true. I'm just looking for any obvious wobble. I'm not even going to go to the um, effort of putting a dial indicator to see how far out of true it is. Every saw blade will have a little bit of wobble to it. It's just, it needs to be small enough that it won't affect anything. And this is well within that. Um, this saw, if you didn't know it was close to 40 years old, 50 years old, you wouldn't be able to know. It's, it's still, it still runs essentially like it's a baby. I'm gonna use this electric duster to get some more of the sawdust out of there, or at least to get it off of the surfaces I'm going to be applying grease. Now I'm spraying anywhere that I'm going to be scrubbing with some WD-40 just to give it some liquid to grab the sawdust so that it doesn't just become aerosol again in the cavity of the saw. Now it's time to scrub. I just beveled the saw all the way to 45 so that I could get an idea of how that screw is going because I can't see most of the screw when the saw is at 90. Um, it did skip at one point, but I think that's mostly because the screw looks pretty caked in sawdust. So I'm gonna see if we can get that cleaned off. The screw looks actually like it's in really good shape. I think it was just a bunch of sawdust caked on that was causing the issue that I had. But I did also find a whole bunch more sawdust caked in different places. So it gives me something to work on. Now I'm just going to wipe up any um, moisture that I can find in there. And then we are ready for grease. It's now time for grease. I'm just using red and tacky. 
What I like about red and tacky is that it's easy to apply, but when you put it somewhere, it stays there. Um, and that's the biggest issue is even though I have to get in there with my finger and actually physically rub it onto every surface and I can't just spray a whole bunch of lithium grease in there and what it hits, it hits. I have to be much more methodical in my application, but I know when I put it there, it stays there. So it's worth the trade off. I'm going to start with the bevel screw because it's the furthest back. Just put a liberal amount on there. See how that's all coated now. And then we can go down to the height adjust. That's all that needs to be done on this side. Now lowering the blade so that I can check to make sure first the squeak is gone and also the rest of the mechanism make sure it becomes just as greased as everything else. Usually greasing in the two extremes are is more than adequate to make sure that everything is as it should be. Good, we are now all greased up and oiled where we should be. Just gonna hit it one more time with the vac to pick up anything that shook loose. And then we can seal this back up and then do the tabletop. In order to help with dust collection, it's best to block off as many air openings as possible in the back of the saw. So I have this piece of foam that's cut to fit in here and to still be able to fit the belt through. So it's a little bit tricky because you have to first hook the belt on this end, then fit the belt through the little insert, and then attach it to your motor as you wedge this thing in there. So it's just a three hand situation. That is in place. When the blade is lowered, when the blade is raised even uh, another millimeter, it will not hit. I have the same thing for the front. It just slides in past zero and scoots back. There we go. And reinstall the saw blade. To that, just raise the mechanism all the way up, just makes it a lot easier. Did a quick inspection of my blade, and it's not the sharpest blade, but it still has a lot of life left in it, so. don't need to over tighten the arbor nut so I just usually hold the blade and just pull it forward that's tight enough it's reverse threaded the more you use the saw the tighter that bolt will get and then lower it make sure our squeak is gone and it sure is so I just want to 
make sure there's no leftover WD-40 to ruin the wood of my insert. Get that down all the way. The insert plate. And it's held in with just a single screw. With the tabletop back in place, it is time to apply a coat of paste finishing wax. I have a lot of extension wings on this table saw. I have enough wings for about two and a half saws. Um, and keeping them all level becomes a little bit of a process, so I don't adjust them very often. But the way that you make sure that they're level is you basically do it mostly by feel. Um, you feel the transition between the cast iron and the wing, and you make sure that you can't feel a rise. If you do feel a rise, you just simply put a block across both of them and whack it. That usually sets the other one down. Sometimes you need to, low, um, to loosen the bolts holding the wing in place, but after you get it all level, you wanna just make sure that all the bolts are nice and snug anyway. Well, my tabletop actually is really good, other than right here. And that put it back in, so we're good. With the tabletop flat and the paste finishing wax dried, I could then buff out the wax and reinstall the fence. As the last two operations we want to do on the table saw is to make sure that the fence is perpendicular to the table and that the blade is at a straight 90 degrees. So we can do both of these easily using the setup blocks. So I just place it against and just make sure that my fence is square, which it is. Yep. It's always nice to just move it a couple of times to make sure it stays square. That's the square. In order to square your blade to the table, first raise the blade up quite a bit. Doesn't need to be all the way up, but. And then place your setup block against it. This is close, but. As you can see, a gap does appear. And you can see right there, there's a little bit of a gap. So we just tilt their blade until that gap is gone. Once your blade is set to 90 degrees, you just lock your tilt lock. And there you have it. I do routine maintenance on my table saw, which includes Rewaxing the tabletop and checking everything for square at least once a month And then I do a more intensive inspection and maintenance like we just did a couple of times a year So thank you for watching make sure you like comment and subscribe to keep up to date with new projects as they are released and until next time. Thank you